Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is J&R Woodworking with a little bit of Jim's Fix-It Shop. Today I'm going to crack open my Delta bandsaw and I'm going to put this riser block in here. It came Thursday, this is Saturday. I have been chomping at the bit to open this thing up, but I thought I'd wait. I'm hoping everything's in here, nothing's damaged, and I really hope it fits my saw. It says on the, well, let me tip this thing down and we'll go from there. It says on the box, both sides, remanufactured for a Delta 14 inch bandsaw. It says it twice on both sides. So I'm guessing what they did is bought one for a different saw and made it to fit this one. And I hope it fits. So let's open this thing up and see what's in here. box is completely taped. I don't know where they shipped it from. Oxford, Pennsylvania. I don't know why they had to tape that box up so much, but it's probably the original box that the original part came in before they altered it. Oh, fun. We got a whole bunch of styrofoam. It comes with a bandsaw blade because obviously your old blades aren't going to fit anymore. That's too bad because I just bought a brand new blade for this thing. You got a longer blade guard. Who knows? Maybe I'll actually put this on. I don't know. You get a longer bolt. Here's the riser block. You know, just don't you love that stuff? And you can tell where they re-drilled to fit my saw. These are two original holes. These are holes they drilled. Looks like they pinned the top ones and put new pins in the new holes. What else is in here? Oh, the new blade guard that goes on the back side of the saw. That's aluminum. Mine's plastic. That's kind of nice. And the new bar for the upper blade guide. That has to be longer. Oh, it's got a note. Okay, it depends on if my saw needs a flat for the screw to clamp against or the V. So I guess you can either use either side. And that should be everything in here. Ugh. So let's get rid of this. So now we got to start tearing this thing apart. Take the old blade guide off, guard off. Now I want to take the table off so when I get this thing put together I can get a straight edge on here and line these pulleys back up. They have to be in line with each other. They have to be, I don't know how I can explain this, they have to be straight over top of each other. They have to be in line this way and this way. 
So let me put you on pause and we'll take this table off. Okay, we took the two little hand wheels, handles off the bottom. It's the ones that you loosen up so you can tilt your table and then you just lift your table straight off. I might run out of places to pile all this stuff. Now I gotta grab a large screwdriver. Okay, now I'm gonna take this rear blade guard off. Couple of, uh, they look like 3 8 screws. And this is just plastic. I like the other one a little better. And we're going to have to take this door off. There's four, three, actually there's only three, sorry. Allen head screws that hold the door on. It's got to give me clearance to get to this nut on the bottom to get the top half off. Now, I hope I can lift this thing. Take the cords off it. The light cord I'm going to have to leave up here. See if we can break this thing loose. Pause the camera, but I know you're all waiting for me to drop this thing on the floor. Now, apparently, the pin pressure is what's holding this thing together right now. Isn't that the way it usually goes? One pin stayed in the bottom and one pin stayed in the top. So I'm going to have to pull this one out. So let me grab a pair of pliers. I found in the past that these pliers work pretty good for pulling out pins, woodruff keys, um, motor shaft keys. Well, that didn't come out too bad. Well, it fits. That's a big relief. I wasn't really sure if it was going to or not. Now, if we can get the top back on there, I guess I better get the bolt ready. Looks like it'll be long enough.
Okay, now I'm pretty sure this probably came from a Grizzly or a Jet and was remanufactured to fit because uh, I had to go get metric wrenches to fit this bolt and nut. But as long as it works, I guess that's good. Now, let's see if I can get this thing back up there. What I'm going to have to do is I've got to put this on the bandsaw, the top part first, because they didn't use regular pins. They used roll pins, which are a little larger than the hole, and you usually have to drive them in. So let me bang this on the top half. We can set it back down on the bottom half. So, yeah, we had to hammer that on because of the roll pins. They're usually a larger diameter than a regular pin is. So let's try to get this back on now, huh? Hopefully the block won't fall off while I'm trying to get it on here. find the holes, it'd be nice. <laughs> this ain't as easy as it looks. There we go. The rest of it goes a little smoother than that did. Trying to get the nut on and stop the bolt from turning. You need a third hand for this. I don't think I can let go of that to hold the bolt. There we go. You might want to have a little help when you try to put this thing together. I guess that's the worst of it. Now if I can do it with this guard my way, I want to check the wheel alignment and see if it's still, everything is in the same plane with each other. Now, put this scale across here and check this out. That looks pretty good. It looks like it may be a little bit out of alignment on the top wheel, but I don't have a blade on there with torqued 
so it will pull the um, alignment we'll see what this blade does we'll stick this on here Tracking's off a little bit. There we go. Boy, it sure makes it a lot taller. Now we'll tighten up this. Tracking's not bad, it's right back in the center. Let's we'll see how it looks now. That looks much better. So let's see if the rest of the parts fit on this thing. I don't know if I can get this rear blade guard in here now with the blade in the way. Well, that one sure don't fit. That's the old one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to take the blade off. Boy, it sure makes a saw stick up in the air a lot. Sounds like my furnace just kicked in. I hope that's not too noisy. Now the new guide bar. This is a little bit different than mine. I may have to alter the uh, clamping screw that goes in the back. You can see this. Mine has a V cut in it. This one they just went down through there with a ball nose end mill instead of turning it on a 45 and going through with a regular end mill. I might take that to the shop and re-groove it. But for right now we'll use the back side that's flat. And this is the first I've noticed my lower guide. Some of these saws, there's three different uh, bars that go on here for your lower guide. One's a, a 15 16 which is this is mine is. One is a one inch, and one is hexed. And apparently they make this lower guide block to fit all three bars. So when you get this on here, this is going to have to be squared with the saw. And how we'll do that is we'll use the blade to square it with. 
So let's see if we can get that big blade back on here. That's going to take some getting used to. Well, everything clears good. The blade's right in the center of this. And they have a really large hole at the bottom with a big washer so you can adjust this and swing it back and forth. So I'm going to move this so the blade is right in the center and we'll tighten her up. Imagine they also do that so if there's any variation in height the bolt will still go in. So this guide block is still set for my uh, old blade. Let me see if I can swing you over here. Okay, as you can see, I loosen up this set screw in the back. I can pretty much swing this block anywhere I want it. So I'm going to let the blade fall in there and I'm going to square this up using the blocks that were adjusted for the old blade that was on here. And we're going to get it centered on that and lock it down. This blade is a little thinner than the one I had so there's a little gap there. You can see it wiggling back and forth. So I just centered that gap on the new blade. That should be close enough. Because when you adjust this to get it tight to the blade, these will move back and forth and you can take the rest of the alignment problem out doing that. Now we're gonna put the lower door back on. I guess we'll pause it for that. Now, unfortunately, I had to take the blade back off to get the table back on. Which isn't really that big of a problem. Put your hand knobs back on. Now I guess I'll throw the blade back on. Okay, we got the blade on it. We might as well set these guide blocks. They're pretty simple to do. Now when I loosen this one, let me see if I can move you over here a little. When I loosen this one up, the little block popped over because it wasn't quite aligned on this blade like it was the old blade. The first thing you want to do is you want to shove your guide blocks out until they get to the back of the gullet, what they call on a, on a blade. So it grabs as much blade as it can, but it doesn't touch the teeth. I just push them up there lightly and tighten them down. Then you want to bring your the backup bearing. I usually bring it up till it touches and then push it out just a little bit. So I know it's riding on that bearing. You can tell when you turn the blade 
the bearing will turn. These bottom blocks don't look too bad. Now I bet you're all waiting to see if I'm going to put this guard on here. <laughs> and yeah, I'll put it on as soon as I find out what I did with my Allen wrench. Where did I leave it laying? Ah, here it is. Got to open the door up. Let's see if this fits. Actually, I think you can use your old one because the point of the riser block is to cut wide boards. How often are you going to use it down here anyway? I've got another bandsaw for that. Actually, I think I am going to use my old guide. Now, obviously, if you use your saw, down here, you only have one saw, and you use it down here, you're probably going to want to put the taller guard on. I don't know. It's, I, that's up to you. <laughs> I'm not going to say. But typically, I'm going to use this thing higher up. So I don't see any reason to put that other guard on, to tell you the truth. Um, I want to check something. Okay, I dug out my Grizzly catalog, and in it is riser blocks, which look a lot like this one. And especially after I found out that was a, a metric bolt, I'm sure they bought these risers and changed the holes to fit these old saws. Now, if you work in a machine shop, I could have done this myself. But, like I said, I'm super busy at work right now. I got this saw for free from a very good friend of mine, my wife's uncle. I helped my father-in-law side his house, and he, he paid us, but he also gave me this saw. He gave me a real nice Delta solid cast iron six inch jointer and he gave me a nice radio arm saw hey I couldn't say no they're tools but in here also is saw blades for a 93 and a half inch blade which was the size of this old one they're all hovering around twenty dollars now if you order it you're gonna pay twenty bucks for the blade and you're going to pay shipping. This blade is an excellent blade. I cut some, uh, I did some resawing with it as tall as I could get into the old saw. And this one works nice. They do an excellent job welding that joint. That joint is guaranteed for the life of the blade. If that breaks, they'll either give me a brand new blade or they'll fix it. This blade was $7. They sell this stuff by the foot. They cut it and they weld it together. Now this was 93 inches, so they charge you for eight feet. And uh, I'll be going down Monday after work and getting a blade for this saw because I, I'm not sure how good this blade really is, but we're gonna try it. I got a board here and uh, we're going to get this started and we're going to run it through here and see what it does. Well, let's give it a shot and see what happens. This is a board I cut with that other blade that I paid seven bucks for. It did an excellent job cutting. Nice and smooth, no rippling. Let's see how this one does. If you got your earbuds in, you may want to pull them out.
let's compare them. It's kind of just uh, what I thought. Here's the ones I cut with my $7 blade. And here's one I just cut with this blade. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see all the rippling in it? This one, you can't see any of that. So I guess we'll buy a new blade first thing Monday morning for this thing. Well, at least it fits. I'm happy about that. So now I've got a $300 bandsaw that I can cut up to 12 inches. That's going to be nice. I've never been able to do that before. Uh, our shop has got a lot of large band saws and a lot of us do woodworking. So I've got one of the big band saws at work set up for doing this. So now I can finally do it at home and I don't have to wait till I get to work to do it. If you got any questions in the description below, I will leave the information on how I got this. The part number you have to type in to bring this one up. Like I said, there's three different models, I guess if you want to call them that. This one's a 15 16 bar. There's a 1 inch bar and there's a hexagon bar. So whatever your saw has, they leave a little note, please order the right one. <laughs> I guess some people had to return them. <coughs> but if you have any questions, comments, Put them in the description below or email me at jnrwoodworking2, that's the number two, at gmail.com. And the J and R, the and is spelled out A and D. Or if it don't go through, use Jim's Fix It Shop at gmail.com. It's the same place. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was kind of informative to you. If you need any other help setting up your bandsaw as far as alignment goes, drop me an email. Be more than happy to help you out. I hope you're subscribed. I got a whole lot of stuff coming up. And uh, I guess that's it. Till next time, keep your tools sharp, your shop dusty, and have a good time. See you soon.